I've been asked a couple of times how I get my prompt to look like I do. So that's what I'm going to look at today. Uh, this tutorial, if you want to call it a tutorial, uh, assumes you're using ZSH as your main shell. Bash is completely different in terms of how you customize your shell. You could get to a prompt like mine in Bash or Fish. You just have to go about doing it in a different way. So today I'm going to be using ZSH and a plugin, a ZSH plugin called Power Level 10,000. So let's go ahead and jump in. So the end result will look something like this. It's not the exact prompt that I had, but it'll look something like this. And like I said, in order for us to do this, we're going to be using Power Level 10,000. Now, if you're using a plugin manager like OhMyZSH, this is very easy to install. If you're managing your own plugins or using some other plugin system, Power Level 10,000 actually has installation for pretty much all those. Uh, calling Presto, Zim, Antibody, Antigen, Zplug, Gzen, all this stuff. You can also do it manually if you wanted to do it manually. Uh, I'm going to be using my ZSH because that's what I prefer to use. Now, I know there are uh, shell purists out there who say, oh my goodness, why you use my ZSH? It's such a memory hog or it's such a, a waste of space or yada, yada, yada. I don't care. I use on my ZSH. I like on my ZSH, and I don't give a crap what anybody else says. So <laughs> I I use on my ZSH. If there's a performance benefit to not using on my ZSH, I'm not so perceptive to that speed change that I'd even notice. So I do use on my ZSH. That's just the way I'm going to do this. The way you install it then is just clicking on this, and it's just a matter of Git cloning and then setting the ZSH theme in your ZSHRC file to this right here. So I've already ha go ahead, gone ahead and done this. So I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's really easy. Just copy this uh, and it will go through and clone that Git repository and then copy this part right here and put this in your ZSHRC. And I will show you my ZSHRC once we're done setting up power level 10,000. But once you've installed this, close your terminal and restart your terminal and you'll get something like this. Now, here's where we get into a little bit of a dependency thing. In order for this to work, you have to have some kind of font on there that will allow you to see symbols and stuff. So font awesome, uh, any of the nerd font completes, any of those kind of things, those will work fine. Powerline fonts is the one that I'm, is the name I'm looking for. So any of those kind of fonts. Now I'm using hack nerd font, I believe. Uh, I'm actually not sure. It might, I might've changed it, but I, actually I'm using JetBrains. I'm using JetBrains nerd font. Uh, so any of the nerd fonts will work. Uh, the Powerline fonts will work as well. So, but you have to have one of those installed and they have to be set in your terminal as your default font. Otherwise, this will not work. All right, well, I mean, it will work, but you won't get any symbols. So basically, this is just a wizard. You just go through and answer the questions. So if you see a diamond here, hit yes. If you see a lock here, hit yes. If you see a Debian logo here, hit yes. Now, here's one where if you see these things and any of them are overlapping, which they're not in this case, you hit no, or I'm gonna hit no. Or I'm gonna hit yes, excuse me, I hit yes. Uh, normally, in like Alacrity and Termite, I'm always seeing them overlap in this part of the wizard. Uh, so this is actually a first for me. And this is Kitty, by the way, I'm using Kitty. So we'll hit yes. And then here's where you choose how your font, how your prompt will look. Uh, or this is the beginning of that process. So you can choose any number of you know, how it will look. And I'm going to hit three for rainbow, so it's multicolored. And this gets colors from your terminal theme, but you can also change them manually later. So uh, if you want the arrows and stuff, you choose number one. If not, you just choose number two. I'm gonna hit one. And then if it asks you if you want the date and time as part of the second part of the font, the prompt, I'm going to hit 3 for 12 hour because 24 hours is hard to actually know what it is because I'm stupid that way. Uh, and then this, we want the separator to be uh, rounded for me. I'm going to do so I'm going to do 4. And we want 4 here again. Now you can choose any of these you want, but I'm just showing you how I get mine. So that's 4 and I also want 5 here. I want this rounded as well. Okay. 
and then we want it to be on one line and we want it to be sparse not compact I don't want it to be bunched together like that and then I want the icons to show up just fine so we're gonna do two and we want it to be concise not fluent okay and then we do want the git pull branch and stuff to show up so we hit yes and if you in this step here I know I'm going fast but in this step here if you have a program that runs every time you run your terminal so whether that's NeoFetch uh, I use FM6000 a lot of people have DT's color scripts or whatever if you have something like that you want to hit number three on this if you don't have an application that runs every time you use your, your terminal you can hit one so I'm gonna hit three in this case if you hit the wrong one of those you can always rerun this wizard uh, by running a command uh, it's in the documentation uh, chances are if you hit the wrong one of those and you have an application that runs at startup you'll get an error uh, it, every time you start up your, your terminal so make sure you choose the right one so now we've gone through and we have the prompt that I originally had now the difference is this is using I, I don't know if you can see this or not but you can see that this just has tux here as the icon and I want to use a custom icon. So you can do that by editing the configuration file. So the configuration file for p10k is in the file .p10k. So we're going to vim into .p10k.zsh. That's the file we want to get into. And in here you can change pretty much everything about your prompt that you want. So basically this is just something that is generated by the wizard by all those settings that we just went through. But if you wanted to go through and manually change any of these, you could. And it, the documentation or the comments in here is actually really good. So what we're going to be looking for is the icon that it uses for that beginning part of the prompt. So also here, before, well, before I go that, you can actually go through and uh, edit what appears in your prompt uh, here, right here. And that will show you what's on the left and the right side of the prompt. And you can just comment on things that you don't want or add things that you do want. Okay. And there's also a, a, several of these that are already commented out. But you can un you could go ahead and uncomment those if you wanted as well. So let me go ahead and scroll down here a little bit and see if I can find that uh, icon that I want to change. Okay, so the icon that I want to change is right here. So I want to uncomment this, and then I want to change this here. So in order to do that, I need to go find the arch icon. In which case, I need to go to the nerd fonts cheat sheet. So nerd fonts cheat sheet. Good old Google is the easiest way to get there. We'll just type in Arch. And this is the one we want. So we copy the icon. Go back to here. Uh, let's change this into this. And write quit. And quit this. And open this back up. And we have Arch. And that's how you get my prompt for ZSH. It's really very, very easy. I will leave a link down below to Power Level 10,000 along with the nerd fonts because, like I said, you will need some kind of font like nerd fonts in order to get this to work. Other than that, it's very simple. Like I said, now, is this something that you absolutely need? No. <laughs> uh, for the most part, this is completely useless. It's just eye candy. That's all it is. And like I said, you can do this with Bash. You can do this with Fish. It just differs, and you have to do it basically manually. Uh, I actually think there is a, like a Oh My Fish or whatever that will do this for Fish. For Bash, I'm not sure if there's anything out there like that, you know, that will do this automatically. Uh, honestly, I haven't used Bash in ages, like the actual Bash prompt. I, I've always just switched to ZSH. So uh, my lack of knowledge there is preventing me from telling you whether or not... Uh, you could do this outside of doing it manually, but you can do this uh, manually to some extent. I don't know how close you'd actually come, but I know that there is ways to put icons and stuff in your bash prompt. So uh, that is it for me today. If you want to follow me, you can do so at the LinuxCast. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven, East Coast Web, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.